Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I wanted to introduce you to this sleepy little fellow. This is Biscotti, my tiny greyhound. I've had him for three weeks. Tomorrow will be three weeks. Today when I'm recording this is February 25th and I got him on February 5th on my birthday. So on March 3rd he will be three months old. He was born on December 3rd. He's a little sleepy right now. So a little backstory about Biscotti. Um, when I was younger, I grew up with Italian Greyhounds and fell in love with the breed. And I always said that when I was older, I wanted to have another Italian Greyhound. Lost my last Italian Greyhound when I was 17. And then my husband and I got married. And in our apartments, we weren't allowed to have dogs, but we could have cats. So we adopted a lady, uh, my black cat lady. And then we eventually got our first house and I went to get an Italian Greyhound. But I was given the opportunity to have a Chinese Crested Powder Puff from my mother. Um, she was breeding them at the time. And, you know, he was a free dog, so I said, okay. So we took a chance. Um, he was about a year when we got him. And then a couple years later, we adopted our Greyhound, not Italian Greyhound. This is an Italian Greyhound. We had, we adopted our full-size Greyhound, Dakota, from the tracks. He was a racing dog. My husband, he grew up with a Greyhound. He had a Greyhound for about 13 years. I grew up with Italian Greyhounds. So, we had Lady, and then we had my Chinese Crested Powder Puff Chance, my little dog, and then we had our big greyhound, Dakota. And then we moved to Florida. And still, I always wanted an Italian greyhound, but it just, you know, we weren't gonna have three dogs, and it just, you know, wasn't an option at the time. And then in 2019, I lost Chance. Um, he'd been struggling with heart failure for about seven or eight months. And then, you know, Chance passed away. And then in February of 2020, we adopted our second cat, Jasmine. Um, and she acts just like a dog. She follows me around. Oh, hi. She follows me around like a dog. She sits when I tell her to sit. She's just, I always say she was, you know, Chance reincarnated because she just follows me around the same way that my little Chance always did. And then in, towards the end of 2020, in September, August or September, um, we lost Dakota. Um, it was very quick, it was overnight. He was screaming in pain one night. And you know, he always had, cause he's a big breed dog, he always had like hip problems and pain with his you know, hips and legs. So we just thought, you know, it was that, but it was a different type of screaming. It was just like nonstop screaming and agony. And you know, we knew something was wrong and it ended up being advanced bone cancer, which is common for greyhounds. So it was, you know, an overnight thing. It was just very sudden. So we lost Dakota and we just had our cat, cats, Lady and Jasmine. And I told my husband, this was towards the end of 2020. I told my husband, I can't do any more dogs. I said, it's, it's too emotional. It's too much. You know, we had both of our dogs for, you know, their whole lives. They were, they were elderly. So, you know, they had long, healthy lives but it was just it was too much I said I, I can't do any more dogs and he agreed and he said okay then fast forward over a year later it was October 2021 so September to October so it was a little over a year and you know it was getting towards Christmas time and my husband started telling me oh I think I have the perfect Christmas gift for you he said but it, it it'll either be the perfect gift ever or it'll be the worst gift ever, but he wouldn't elaborate. And so he kind of got my youngest, our youngest son, Alexander, he kind of got him involved. I guess he's just gonna sleep the whole video. Like he's just so sweet. Um, he got our youngest son involved and it kind of turned into a guessing game and based off of kind of like the clues, I kind of figured out that he was wanting to get me an Italian Greyhound. Now he knew that it would either be the best gift in the world because he's known for over 23 years since I was 17 that I've wanted an Italian Greyhound, that they're just my dream. But it could have been the worst gift ever because I said I couldn't handle any more dogs. So when I kind of figured out that that's, hi, hi Bubby. When I figured out that that's kind of what he was wanting, I immediately got very excited and I made it very well known that if that was his intentions, that yes, I was extremely open for getting an Italian Greyhound and um, he wouldn't let on at first. He kind of like just played it out and turned it into a joke. And then 
you know, I kept dreaming about an Itang Greyhound with my friends, my group of friends, and, you know, they helped me pick out names for my hypothetical puppy that I might not be getting. And finally, when it was closer towards Christmas, you know, I was like, I couldn't take it anymore. I said, am I getting an Itang Greyhound or not? And he said, well, how serious are you about it? And I said, I want one. And he was like, good, because he had spent the last couple months finding a breeder. Um, we'd never bought a dog before it had always been or animals we'd always adopted our animals and then chance you know was given to me from my mother who was a breeder but we had never gone through the breeder route of finding a reputable breeder and you know purchasing a dog so he took his time he found a good breeder um and she had a few litters she only breeds a couple times a year so she had a few litters my only stipulation like my number one stipulation was that i it had to be a male I knew 100% that I wanted a male dog. I've always had male dogs. Um, well, my Italian Greyhound when I was younger, she was a female. But besides that, you know, I've always had male dogs. I've always had female cats. It's just how I am. And Italian Greyhounds specifically, males are extremely sweet and affectionate. I mean, females are too, but males in particular are extreme just, they want to be with their person at all times. And that's what I wanted. So I knew I wanted a male. I wanted a brindle, which is, um, excuse me, a fawn, which is what Biscotti is. He's fawn colored, but that wasn't a necessity. Like I obviously wasn't going to pick a dog based off of, you know, the color, but I did want a fawn for a couple different reasons, for health reasons and also for aesthetic reasons, because his name was going to be Biscotti and I thought it would be really cute having a fawn, you know, Biscotti colored, you know, puppy. Um, for health reasons, it was because uh, I tie greyhounds get this thing called, um, I forget what it's called. It's like, um, I think it's called dilute color, hi, dilute color alopecia. Uh, because there's like main colors, like fawn is a main color. Then there's black, which is a main color. And then there's diluted variations of those colors. So like blue dogs, which is gray, but they're called blue. Um, blue dogs blue iggies is called a dilute because it's a dilution from black and then there's cream colored iggies that are a dilute from fawns so they're the ones that look almost white um, and dilute iggies are prone to getting what's called alopecia which is hair loss um, it's genetic it's not and it's like it's not a hundred percent always going to happen but it's they're very prone to it. So for health reasons, I didn't want to get a dilute. I'm really drawn to the blue Iggy's. I think they're beautiful. But again, for health reasons, I would prefer to not have a dilute. And I really just had my heart set on having a fun, a fun male Iggy. Anyway, so on December 3rd, she had a litter. She had a couple litters in December. She had like three, or f I think like four litters. She only breeds like twice a year. So when she does breed, she has a few litters. So she had a few litters. Um, we were like far down on the list. We were like number 10. I didn't think it was going to happen at all. Um, certainly wasn't going to happen by Christmas. Um, but he was far, my husband was like number 10. But apparently most people are looking for females. And I specifically wanted a male. So we were like at the top of the list because I wanted a male. So my husband said, look on the website. And she had, you know, a couple litters that were being born. At, the, at that time, she only had one litter that had been born. And that was Biscotti's litter. So I looked at the pictures. Um, she had, number one, she had a lot of females. Hi, you hear Jazzy's food bowl going off? He is so smart. He has learned that sound, you know, like Pablo's bell. That's the cat's bowl that goes off. The cat knows that sound and she immediately knows that her food's going off. But he has also learned that sound. Look at him, he's freaking up. Um, and he has learned that he eats when she eats. So when her sound goes off, he knows this honey, so that perked him up. We eat when we're done, okay? Um, anyways, so she has a lot of females, and she has almost all of her dogs end up being grays. So he was the only male fawn in that first litter, and he was born on December 3rd. And I just, you know, I could have waited. She said we could wait for the next couple litters to be born and see if I like any of those better, but then I would risk losing getting the only male fawn that she seems to have and it just and I just I don't know I just something told me that it was right so I said I wanted him so we picked him and then her next three litters ended up being 
mostly all females in all grays. She didn't have any fawns. So I made the right choice. And then based on, this was just pure coincidence, but based on when he was born and when she weans the puppies and you know does their vaccinations and has people pick them up on Saturdays, based on that, I was able to pick him up on my birthday on February 5th, Saturday, February 5th. So it just worked out. And my husband and I drove. It was about a six hour drive. We went and picked him up. And he was just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I am so in love with this guy. Yes, hi baby. My little bubby. He is just so sweet. He's very playful. He is so smart, you guys. I'm doing all of his commands in Italian and he is soaking them up like a sponge. He is just, he's so smart. Hi, Jazzy. Hi. Him and his sister, Jazzy. Um, they get along for the most part. Um, she comes up to him and, you know, she lets him come up to her if he's gentle, if he's calm. But, you know, he's a puppy and he, you know, likes to jump and bounce and um, she doesn't like that. So if he gets too close in her face, she, like, swats at him, hisses at him, and swats and runs away from him. Um, but he has kind of learned that if he bounces around her and doesn't get too close in her face, then she'll just sit there and kind of watch him. <laughs> so he's... He's learning. Anyways, what was I saying? So he is so smart. Um, I'm, I've am i actually been recording his training sessions, teaching him his commands. I'm gonna put that out as a separate video. And I think, because we're gonna be fencing in our yard soon, we're gonna be painting the outside of our house and then once, repainting our house. And then once we've painted, we're having the yard fenced in and I'm gonna build him an agility course because he is so smart and he seems to just really enjoy learning. So I'm gonna do that. That's going to be separate videos. Those will be separate videos. Um, don't worry, my channel is not going to turn into, you know, a dog channel. It's just, you know, I'm still going to be doing my nail polish. I'm slowly starting to reincorporate, you know, makeup and things like that. Because um, I do have a lot of interests besides just nail polish. So, But no, my channel is not going to just become a dog channel. But I do want to incorporate some of that. I thought, think it would be fun. And I think some people might enjoy it. Anyways, um, milestones that we're going through right now. So today... He's actually going to get his next set of puppy shots. So by next week, you know, once he's had, you know, a little more immunity from his vaccinations, I can finally start taking him outside to potty train. Because up until now, we've been having to use pee pads, which I'm not a fan of. Italian greyhounds are extremely, extremely hard to potty train. And the longer that you're with pee pads for them, the harder it is to potty train them. And you know, any dog that's potty trained on pee pads, they're never quite able to distinguish between a pee pad and you know, like your carpets. Or with him specifically, um, issues that I'm having with him is, you know, he pees on his blankets. So he'll be in his crate and he'll pee directly on his blanket, which dogs aren't supposed to wanna pee or potty where they sleep, but he does. So he pees directly on his blankets. Um, he poops in his crate. So issues that we're having with him, like I cannot put him in his crate or his playpen at all unless I know like he's had his potty, like he's done his poop after he eats or whatever. But hi, because he will 100% go to the bathroom in his crate or his playpen, wherever I, you know, have him and he will step in it and he'll smear it everywhere and then he'll eat it. That's another big issue I'm having with him is that he eats his poop. So, and he's also, he seems to be a shy pooper. So even though I know he has to go potty, cause you know, he starts circling and starts, you know, kind of prancing around and sniffing around. I know he has to go potty. And I take, so I take him to his pad and he just, he won't go. Because the other thing is that he wants to eat it. So I don't know if he's a shy pooper or he's just, you know, being stubborn or if he's refusing to go when I'm there because he knows that it's gonna be a fight. You know, I fight with him to scoop it up before he does because you know, he wants to eat it and I obviously don't want to do that. So I don't know if that's why he's being stubborn with his potties, but I'm really excited to finally start getting to take him outside to potty train him. I'm hoping that because he is so smart, I'm hoping that things will just kind of click with him. Um, looking forward to socializing him. Hi, Bubby. This little guy, he's just so precious. You guys look at him. But yes, yeah, so this is Biscotti. Um, He's just such a wonderful, wonderful dog. I love him so much. And I'm so happy that my husband knows me 
enough. He knows me well enough to know that when I said I didn't want any more dogs, then I really didn't mean forever. Um, so, Freddie, do you want to wake up and say hi? Want to say hi to everyone? So, I'm going to include some pictures and some videos, and then if you're interested, keep a lookout for his training videos. I think I'm going to I have enough clips for now that I'm going to upload one, and then I'll just upload more as he progresses with the training. Okay. Yeah, it's a good boy. You like Terry the Pterodactyl? Nice toy. He got this in his pup box. It's a good boy. He is a chewer and a biter. He's very bitey right now. You know all puppies are bitey, but he's a really bad biter. Um, I have to distract him. Once he starts biting, I have to immediately distract him with some kind of chew toy or like a little little chewy thing. Got this from Petco. It used to be an alligator, but he already like ripped the tail off. And Is he dad? Oh, yes, he loves, loves to chew. Hi, Jazzy. You wanna come say hi too? Oh, there she is. Wanna say hi? Come here. Come here, Jazzy. Yes, my sweet girl. Come here. Jazzy, hi. This is Jazzy and this is Biscotti. Wanna say hi? No? Hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, she wants to go. All right, you guys. If you guys have any questions or anything in particular that you want me to show in any upcoming videos, let me know. Leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Scotty, say bye. Hey, Scotty. No, please look at him. Sister Jasmine. Hi. Bye, guys. So silly, no bites. Where are you going, crazy boy? Biscotti! Vienni! Bravo! Good boy, Vienni! Good boy! Yes, you crazy boy!